Let's talk about Falcon Heavy. We almost saw the quickest turnaround of a rocket launch. It would have been the closest launch of two rockets from Florida ever. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Let's rewind to the 28th of April. First, we witnessed a Falcon 9 launch. SpaceX launched a second pair of O3B M-Power satellites for SES, which is working to bring its next generation broadband constellation into medium Earth orbit. Now, the satellites lifted off at 6.12 p.m. Eastern on a Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Now, we could have possibly seen a Falcon Heavy launch from a nearby launch pad barely two hours after that. This, of course, if the weather had held. SpaceX was due to make another attempt at launching Viasat 3 Americas with a Falcon Heavy at NASA's Kennedy Space Center at 8.26 p.m. Eastern, April 28th. Unfortunately, they aborted the launch at T minus 59 seconds. Falcon Heavy is in startup. Great news there, and folks. Abort. As you may have heard, there was an abort just called launch Over the Nets. Running. Just give us a few moments. We're going to check in with the team and listen to the Nets, and we'll see if we can get some additional information to share. We'll check out the photo of the storm, which produced hail, tornadoes, and lightning. Instead, we got to witness the epic Falcon Heavy, Heavy launch on April 30th, and which Falcon Heavy launch is an epic. Well, this one was interesting because they expended all three of the cores. SpaceX launched the America's Focus Viasat 3 broadband satellite toward geostationary orbit. It is full power and lift off of Viasat 3. Go Viasat, go Falcon Heavy. And this was Falcon Heavy's sixth flight since its debut in 2018. Both side boosters separated from the core stage just over three minutes after liftoff. According to a Space News article, the boosters had previously supported nine earlier missions in total. However, SpaceX decided not to attempt to recover them this time to improve the rocket's performance. The primary 6,400 kilogram Viasat 3 America's payload was deployed around four hours and 32 minutes after liftoff. And this was followed by two rideshare payloads. Arcturus, this was the first broadband satellite built by Californian venture Astranus at under 400 kilograms and a CubeSat from Washington based Gravity Space with a communications payload. Now, Viasat had originally planned to deploy the first of three Viasat 3 satellites in 2019, but production and supply chain issues delayed the mission by years. We also learned recently Vandenberg will now be capable of Falcon Heavy launches. That's right, SpaceX is now leasing one of the most iconic launch sites, the Vandenberg Space Force Bases or Space Launch Complex 6. Colonel Rob Long, the Space Launch Delta 30 commander, signed a statement supporting SpaceX's lease to launch Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions from the launch site. This is interesting because according to a tweet from Eric Berger from April 10th, Blue Origin also had interest in Slick 6. Eric wrote, I'm hearing that Blue Origin is working to take over SLC 6 at Vandenberg Space Force Base. That won't happen until after the Delta IV Heavy is officially retired. That would give New Glenn a West Coast launch pad. However, we learned recently SpaceX won the lease. So why the interest? Well, launching from the West Coast, or the best coast in my opinion, is critical for polar orbit launches. Vandenberg is very uniquely situated that to get into polar orbit, we have to launch either south or north to go over the poles. Vandenberg has a great strategic location that we can launch south without flying our rockets over any population centers. Polar orbit is a very unique application, so that drives a much lower launch tempo. Now, most of these launches in polar orbit are Earth imaging satellites, but you can't launch due north or south from Florida without flying over populated areas. Due south from Vandy is ocean all the way down. That's why it's been a popular polar orbit launch site since 1959. Slick 6 was built in the 1960s for a military space station program that was canceled and then upgraded in the 1980s for West Coast Space Shuttle launches, which were 
also canceled before the first flight. Finally, it got used starting in the mid 1990s for satellite launches, most recently Delta IV. Another reason to use Vandy is just capacity. With a lot of launches, it helps to have another pad. Now this is not such an issue at the moment with Falcon Heavy. Having the capability to launch a Falcon Heavy from Slick 6 could support launching large heavy NRO spy satellites to polar orbit. Now Slick 6 was under the stewardship of United launch alliance for the launch of its west coast delta rockets this was before vacating the site after its final delta 4 heavy launch in september of 2022 liftoff of the last west coast united launch heavy alliance delta on. 4 heavy rocket carrying nrol 91 for the national reconnaissance office vehicle has now begun the pitch over maneuver All three RS-68 engines look good at this time. So it looks like the next Falcon Heavy launch we can look forward to is June 23rd. A SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket will launch the USSF-52 mission for the US Space Force. The Falcon Heavy will launch an unspecified military payload on this mission. And keep in mind, this mission has been delayed from October 2021. So I'm hoping I can go to that since my first and only Falcon Heavy experience was fogged out or maybe the US Space Force has a functional cloaking device. However, at T minus zero, we didn't see anything. We were expecting the fog to have an orange glow confirming liftoff, but even the Falcon Heavy could not penetrate that heavy fog. We listened to the live stream and they were still proceeding with the countdown. We could not hear a hold or a scrub and the crowd was hushed, wanting to know if the launch had occurred. Then at T plus 20 seconds, the sound began to wash over the crowd and we knew that liftoff had occurred. Landing zone one and two. to Bohemso for sending me this awesome Falcon Heavy model rocket, but I just wanted to make a video dedicated to some recent Falcon Heavy news and show you obviously the beautiful epic sights of the launch because who doesn't love to see a Falcon Heavy launch? They're always epic in my opinion, and I can't wait to attempt to see another one because it really was such a bummer to fly all the way to Florida from Portland, Oregon. And on top of that, I found out that I had COVID after that trip. So I was just feeling terrible and it was really a bummer not to see the most amazing part, which is the landing of the Falcon Heavy boosters. So that was really unfortunate, but I'm sure that there will be a next time. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to Ellie in Space if you haven't already.